Good morning. Today is Friday the 8th of July. This morning I'm going to share with you an article out of the Connection magazine which is published by the Methodist Church. I think it's four times a year and I always find it helpful um, and interesting to read this actually. And yeah, this is an article um, called Good News of Pentecost by Ashley Cooper. As we find ourselves post-Pentecost living, a life open to God's spirit and hoping for a fresh sense of God's indwelling, we look to the lives of the disciples who suddenly found a new purpose and passion on the day of Pentecost. They were inwardly transformed beyond recognition for all to see and hear. The pages of the New Testament flow from this point and a new era of mission is born. Following the outpouring of God's Spirit in Acts chapter 2, Peter is a different man. He preaches his first sermon and about 3,000 people are added to their number that day. The Spirit transformed him, filled him and equipped him for the task. The Spirit changed 3,000 hearts. How I long for a few more days like that in our churches. Peter's sermon stirred up an instant response in those who listened. Baptism, the breaking of bread, prayer, the sharing of money and possessions, a true community of believers, all came from Peter's spirit-filled words. The American evangelist D. L. Moody once said, You might as well try to hear without ears or breathe without lungs as to try to live the Christian life without the power of God. On the day of Pentecost, the faith were gathered together, trusting God to do something amazing and bigger than they could do themselves. They waited on God and God showed up just as promised. As I explore the theme of open to the spirit, I find myself reflecting on how open to transformation we really are. Is the church desperate and longing for a fresh outpouring of God? Are you? Do we want an outpouring of God's spirit that drives us into our communities and our world? Do we truly want to usher in a new era of mission that transforms our nation? Many of us have become consumed with programmes and committees and seen our church decline. Some attend church to be entertained and if they don't like it or it's not their style they moan or leave. Instead of openly allowing God's word to change and challenge us, we want a motivational pep talk or to leave feeling good about ourselves, rather than encountering the challenge, the challenging spirit of God. It's the word and power of God's spirit working in our lives that can change the world, change circumstances and change us. Experiencing Pentecost doesn't have to wait until 50 days after Easter. It is waiting on God, just like the faithful did, and expecting to receive from God the power to change our lives and our world. It is the ushering in of a new era of mission and evangelism. Here is God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all people. That includes you and me. It's the good news of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit continues the ministry of Jesus. It took a group of lost, confused, but expectant disciples and shaped the early church with them. It became a church that changed the fate of millions of people. It's a church that, despite its failings, is still a world-changing force for good. It's a ministry of salvation, a ministry of hope, a ministry of renewal and refreshment. Jesus' ministry continues through young men and women who dream dreams and see visions. It continues through organists and music groups 
through Sunday school teachers, local preachers, messy church, coffee mornings and pastoral encounters. Jesus' ministry continues through all of God's people who are open to God's spirit, pushing them out and leading them into communities, workplaces, schools and the whole world. The Holy Spirit was a gift given freely to the church. It gives you power to show people through it gives you power to show people Christ through your words and through your lives. There is no greater challenge. I hope you found that useful.